Equilibrium constants are um, kind of a fundamental way of looking at what chemical reactions are doing. In order to understand this, you want to be able to write out and balance a chemical reaction. We'll begin with talking about where is equilibrium? And it turns out that it can be described a couple of different ways. It is a particular set of concentrations of reactants and products. It's a particular ratio of reactants to products. And it's also the point at which um, the rate of the reactants forming the products is equal to the rate of the products forming reactants. So when people write equilibrium, reactions that are at equilibrium, for instance, if I have A in equilibrium with B, we talk about it's going forward, reaction is going from A to form B, but it's also going in reverse, in which B is going to form A. And often the way you'll see this is a half-headed arrow, like so, and that's considered an equilibrium arrow. Mine in this, in this video will look more like this because that's what I could do with PowerPoint. One common misconception is that at equilibrium, the amount of A that I have is equal to the amount of B, but that's not actually true. And to help you understand this concept, I thought we should talk about a swimming pool. Now this is a random picture of a swimming pool that I found on Google Images, and I was reading that this pool can host 2,500 people, which is a lot of people. So imagine for me, really hot day, and every, maybe there's been a power outage or something, and so everybody is headed to the swimming pool. And in early in the day, when it's cooler in the day, not as many people are coming into the swimming pool. So, and in fact, probably more people are coming into the swimming pool than are leaving the swimming pool. So we're not at equilibrium at that point. We've got more people going in than we do coming back out. Later on in the day, however, as more people go in, eventually we'll reach the capacity of the swimming pool. There will be 2,500 people in there, and the folks who are letting people into the swimming pool will say, no, 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 you have to wait out here. And we don't actually have a picture of that here, but somewhere there are people waiting. And so at that point, the number of people who go into the swimming pool must equal the number of people who come out of the swimming pool because for every person who goes in, there has to be someone who comes out because they've reached the maximum capacity of the pool. Now, it doesn't matter how many people are actually waiting outside. The, the number of people in the pool is 2,500. So I might have five people waiting outside, but I'm at equilibrium because for every one of those people who goes inside, somebody must come back out. Now, that equilibrium won't last in my swimming pool analogy because eventually um, the pool will close and it'll get cooler and, uh, towards the end of the day and more people will come out of the swimming pool than are going in. So my equilibrium in this particular scenario only existed when I had an equal number of people coming in as I had going out. It didn't matter that I had way more people in the pool than I did out of the pool. Equilibrium was defined as the point at which I had an equal number of people coming in as I did going out. So, how can you get the equilibrium constant expression, these are called KEQs, from a balanced chemical reaction? Well, it's actually uh, not too difficult, and it'd help if my, <laughs> my reaction arrow decided to float up there. It should be down here. We'll just pretend it's down there. I'll draw one in. So equilibrium constant expressions, or KEQs, are derived by taking your balanced chemical reaction and taking the concentrations of your products and multiplying them together. Except, hold on, wait a minute, there's something you have to check. I have to check the, whoops, I just tried to erase my solid. I have to check the state of matter of each of these substances. Because in equilibrium constant expressions, there are no solids or pure liquids included. So I'm going to have my products over my reactants, but I'm only going to have products that are not solids or pure liquids. Now substance D here in the products, it's a solid, so I can't include it in my equilibrium constant expression. Then I'm going to tackle my reactants. So it's always going to be products divided by reactants. 
and I'm denoting the concentration of each by um, putting them in brackets. So brackets around C is telling me this is the molarity of C, or C's molarity. So I've taken care of my products. I had to leave out D because it was a solid. I go over and look at the reactants and see that A is a liquid, so that won't show up, and B is a gas. Well, B will show up, and what's interesting about B is that its coefficient in the balanced chemical reaction is a 3. And because that is there, I will cube the B in my expression. So anytime there's a coefficient that's not 1, it becomes the power that I raise that concentration of that substance to in the equilibrium constant expression. So let's review. When you're calculating an equilibrium constant expression, it's always products divided by reactants. You leave out any pure solids and liquids, and you always raise the concentrations of each substance to a power equal to the coefficient in the balanced chemical reaction. Let's practice this. So what is the equilibrium constant expression for each of the reactions shown below? Let's start with the first one. I'm remembering that it's KEQ. It's going to be equal to my products divided by my reactants. I check states of matter and I see, oh, not going to do anything with that KCl because it's a solid. Everybody else would be included. I'm also noticing that these guys have coefficients that are not equal to 1. So I end up with O2 raised to the power of 3. And that comes from the fact that the coefficient was a 3. And I'm going to divide it by the concentration of KClO3 raised to the power of 2, because I had a coefficient of 2 in my balanced chemical reaction. So that's my equilibrium constant expression for that reaction. Let's take a look at the next one. I see that in this case, everybody in the reaction is a gas, so everyone will be included. My equilibrium constant expression then will be my products, carbon disulfide, had a coefficient of 1, so no exponent, multiplied by the concentration of hydrogen raised to the fourth power, because the coefficient was 4, right there. Notice these two things are multiplied together. They are not added, so that's something you want to keep in mind as you're writing these out. And then I'm dividing by my reactants. I have H2S squared multiplied by CH4 raised to the first power. And I'm finished. If I actually want to know the numerical value of the equilibrium constant, then I have to have some information about the concentrations of my reactants and products at equilibrium. So that information often has to be given to me if I want a specific number. In this case, I have this reaction. I have N2O4 at equilibrium with NO2. So, and I'm asked to calculate the value of the equilibrium constant for the reaction below if the concentration of N2O4 at equilibrium is 0.213 molar and if the concentration of NO2 at equilibrium is 0.0032 molar. So two numbers that I'm definitely going to use. First, I have to come up with what the equilibrium constant expression is. I check and I see physical states of matter, both gases, so they're both included. Products will go on the top, squared because of that coefficient of 2, divided by my reactant. And now I can just put in the numbers that I was given. Uh, the concentration of NO2 was 0.0032 molar squared, divided by the concentration of my N204, and I forgot to bring my calculator, so I have to see if I can find one here. Um, it's not looking good. So I will have to make a note of what that actual answer is, but you can put it into your calculator and you could tell me. The size of the equilibrium constant expression, the general size, is going to tell us something about what's happening at equilibrium. So if I have my general reaction here, 
and I have some, let's say, some aqueous reaction happening. If we think about my equilibrium constant expression for this, it's the concentration of B divided by the concentration of A. So if I have lots of B, then my equilibrium constant expression, my KEQ, should be large. And if I have lots of A, then my K equilibrium should be small. So it turns out that if you have a large equilibrium constant expression, and by large we mean greater than 1,000, then we say that products are favored. If you have a small equilibrium constant expression, on the other hand, and by that we mean less than 0 0.001, then reactants are favored. Now, the mathematically astute among you are wondering what the heck happens between 999 and 0.001. Well, that's sort of this region where we don't know for sure whether one or the other is favored. What we say is that there are large amounts of both. 